So my name is Sean Maloney. I'm the Associate Director of Development for the School of Advanced International Studies. Today is Thursday, April 3rd, 2014, and it's uh, your birthday today, Abby. So thank you so much for joining us. If you would please um, introduce yourself and maybe start with telling us what originally brought you to SICE. My name is Abby Lynn Gilbert. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I went to Goucher College. I became inter interested in international relations when I was young. I was very taken with Pauline Fredericks, who was then the American ambassador to the United Nations. And I thought doing work for peace was uh, something that would interest me. And I was an international relations major at Goucher College, and my Brownlee Sands Corin, my major advisor, recommended sites to me. And that's how I came to Washington, D.C. and Johns Hopkins. Wow, that is, that is incredible. Um, and can you tell us just a little bit about your experience as a student at SICE while you were here? Yes, um, my roommate was Sue King, now Sue King Parsons, and my identical twin sister Ellen Gilbert had gone to Bologna the first year. It was the first year we were separated, so that was an interesting experience. And Sue and I lived in the Chastleton at 16th and R, which was then famous as having been the apartment house where all the kept women in Washington were kept by senators and congressmen. But the neighborhood was not very safe. They used to shoot people on Riggs Place for entertainment on Saturday night. And we were told never to walk home alone from SICE, which was then on Florida Avenue. And Sue and I uh, w would walk every day to the SICE building. And two doors away was a Church of Scientology, which was periodically raided by the FBI, and we would go out on the street and laugh. Anyway, I was what today they would probably call a generalist. I went into international law under Philip Thayer and Latin American studies under John Dreyer, and it was very interesting. We all had to take, unfortunately, a course we all hated called Wide Wide World, and did not find very useful, but we sat through it. And I remember the assistant librarian named Frances Short continuously told us that the library was on the old girls' school basketball court. Mm -hmm. Of course, the greatest memory of the first year was the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we were all, we knew something serious was happening. We could tell what professors were disappearing out of school to go to the State Department and the White House. And it was really a very frightening time because nobody knew that there wouldn't be nuclear war. So that was probably one of the most important highlights of the first year. That and the fact that it took them seven or eight months just to dig the hole for what is now the Hilton Hotel on Florida Avenue across from Sice and it's still standing. The second year, and we liked the building, it was small and intimate, we knew everybody. The second year we came to the new building, we were the first class here, and we met our fellow classmates from Bologna that began their first year, in, their second year in our class, but their first year in Washington. And Sue King reminded me that we all thought that the locked top floor, the eighth floor, was where the CIA really was. I had, didn't remember that, but we all laughed. And there was nothing in the basement but lockers, and the wide, wide world class was in what's now the auditorium and where we have luncheons and dinners. And someone donated what we later realized was a Morris Lewis to the school, which was this strange painting, and we all thought it looked like the back of an elephant coming towards you, so we named the room the Elephant Room. And we had small classes, and we had wonderful professors like Robert Tucker and Isaiah Frank, and our dean was Dean Wilcox, and it was fun. It was and language studies. Um, I can't remember Mark's last name, but um, Madame and Monsieur Tumayon, Mr. Tumayon later became the translator in the Iranian hostage crisis. So it was fun, and Priscilla Mason, and we all knew each other. I mean, it was a small group. It was a family. It was. It was. It, it was. Yeah. It was. Uh, and can you share a little bit about your illustrious career post SICE? Well, I'm not sure it was illustrious, but it's been <laughs> interesting. I spent my entire 50-year career working with the Treasury Department. Um, 
I couldn't find a job and I finally landed in the Comptroller of the Currency's office and I was there for, for 10 years. Then I went to the Office of the Treasury of the United States and ran the Bicentennial Program for Treasury, which I loved. And then I moved to the International Division where I was for many years. And after that I moved to the Office of Economic Policy. And from there I ended up ending my career at a bureau, which is the United States Mint, where I do historical research. Wow. And maybe you could highlight on what you think was, you know, the, the crowning moment of your career or, or you know, what, what's your most, what do you look back with the greatest fondness? You mean in my work career? Yeah. Probably working for the Treasury of the United States and the Bicentennial of the United States. I mean, that was really meaningful and it was very interesting and I enjoyed it a great deal. Wow. Uh, if you could offer advice to a current SICE student today, what would it be? I think to try to follow your dreams, that you shouldn't feel constricted because you've had an international relations training, that you have to stay in the field, that you can do a lot of other things because it's the tools that you learn at SICE that are valuable and you can put them into anything you do. Mm. That's great. Well, thank you so much for taking time today on your birthday and for uh, joining us to, to do this, um, this oral history project. We really appreciate it and uh, look forward to sharing it with others. Well, you're, thank you very much. I'd just like to say one other thing. Um, I have spent 38 years as a board member and once as president of the Treasury Historical Association, which is a private nonprofit, and we've also done an oral history program, so I'm glad you're doing this oh. because they're really invaluable. and. They're fun to go back and listen to, and they often sometimes have tidbits of history you don't find in the history books. Oh, absolutely. Great. Well, thank you.